How's everybody doing today? Sure. Uh, hey, Blake, uh, Glenn West, go 247. Just um, was just curious just how you think the interior defensive line has looked. Um, I know that's probably a question a lot of folks have just this offseason. Just how, how, how would you assess where those guys are and what, what you need to see going forward? Yeah, I think they're getting better every day. I think um, Coach Davis is really doing a nice job with them. Um, and we have some pieces to work with in there. We have some guys that have played some football, some new faces, uh, some guys obviously we moved from the offensive line. So I would say it's a work in progress. Um, but I will say that they have shown improvement uh, daily. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Just your thoughts on you, know, you and your family were here in 2021. And I know uh, you have a lot of ties to the Louisiana area. And now to come back and be the defensive coordinator. How does that all feel for, for you and your family now? Yeah, we were really, really excited. You know, um, we really did enjoy our, our time in Columbia, and, and, and Coach Drinkwitz was, was absolutely phenomenal, and, and we're still really close, uh, which made it a tougher decision, um, to be honest with you. But at the end of the day, the opportunity to be uh, close to home, be close to family, um, my kids right now are at their grandma's their own spring break. They're at their grandma's in Mandeville right now for the week. So things like that, you, you just can't take for granted when you get the opportunity in this profession, especially at a place like LSU. You know, this to me has always been one of those uh, dream jobs. Um, when I first got into coaching, actually, even before I got into coaching, I've always, um, you know, dreamed of being the defensive coordinator here. And so when the opportunity rose, um, you know, I kind of took everything and, and we sat down as a family and uh, thought it was the best decision for our family, but very, very happy to be back. Hey, Blake Wilson, I with The Advocate. Uh, your defenses are known for being rather aggressive, um, certainly, you know, high numbers last few years in sacks and tackles for loss. How do you foster that aggression? Uh, I think um, I think the style of defense we play uh, helps. Um, but I also think really just trying to allow our kids to play free. Um, and what I mean by that, obviously, they need to play within the structure of the scheme. Um, but there's an opportunity, there's a lot of opportunities, um, to make plays within the scheme. And so just small things as far as, um, again, when I say style of play, we want to be a vertical one gap defense where we're creating havoc in the backfield. Um, you know, and, and so when we talk about gaps, uh, you know, we don't necessarily harp on gaps as much as fits, if that makes any sense. But I think keeping it, keeping it simple for our guys and then uh, trying to make it complicated on the offense. And I think the way that we install the defense uh, from a verbiage standpoint, we try to compartmentalize things. I think all those things um, kind of foster that. But then most importantly to me, it, it's an attitude, it's a mindset, and it starts with how we take the field every single day. And I've been pleased with our guys. I think um, they have really, uh, I, think, I think they're enjoying it, but I also think that um, you know, they've really, they've really taken to it, you know, as far as what we're trying to do from a culture standpoint. Uh, but I do think the scheme and, and the way that we coach allows it to, to kind of foster it all into one. Hey, Coach. Bree Andrews, WBRZ. With this whole coaching staff, defensive coaching staff being brand new, how have you guys kind of gelled together to kind of create the perfect defense that you want to create and how have the guys responded to your, your guys' approach? Yeah, so it's kind of uh, interesting when Coach Kelly and I got together and, and started talking about names that we wanted to hire. Um, to be honest with you, I've been, I've been blessed. I've worked with every single one of these guys at, at previous stops. So I kind of knew how each guy was individually. Um, but to put them all together, you know, I knew what kind of people, uh, person they are. So I knew that they would gel uh, pretty quickly. And, and I think we have really good staff com camaraderie. I think that's really important as well because the kids see how you interact um, with each other. So I think uh, it's been really, really smooth as far as the transition of us all, all getting together at the same time. And then I think our, our guys are, are – I mean, they've bought in, you know. I think they're learning different, different techniques and some things it's taken some guys a little bit longer to adjust maybe, but there's never, there's not, there hadn't been a guy really spitting the bit or, or, or bucking it the way that we're coaching. I think they're all in on, on what we're trying to do. So it's been really, really uh, cool to see it this far. Hey, Coach, uh, Grant Sasher of Anna Valley Shook. Um, P.J. Woodland has uh, really stepped it up this spring. You know, he's a true freshman, and he also, a few months ago, was taking his high school exam. So how, what have you seen from, from him that has impressed you uh, now that he's a part of the first team? Competitiveness. P.J. Woodland is um, – he is a competitor. He's feisty. Um, he'll throw it in there. He's physical, and, and he can run. 
Uh, but more than anything, for a freshman or a high school senior, as you put it, um, you know, we've thrown him out there with the one sum, uh, thrown him out there against our, our top receivers, and he competes, and uh, that's where it starts. But he's got the physical tools. He, he's, he's got uh, long levers. Um, like I said, he's physical and he can run. So I've been really, really impressed by him. It wasn't easy, you know. The, uh, <laughs> I promise you those first three days before spring break, he probably thought, what in the world did I do, you know, coming, coming here and coming here early. But, man, he's, he's been really impressive these last few days. What's up, Blake? Uh, it's been Corey. a while, man. I know. What's up, man? How you doing? Um, I just want to know, like, how your philosophy has maybe changed over the last three or four years that you've gone and took a couple of different places, been the D.C. there, uh, obviously from your time at Louisiana Tech till now, the type of player, has it, has it changed in, in what you look for in certain positions, you know, what you may try to approach? Like, how does it – do you think it's changed at all? I think at its core, um, it, it's it's – it's very consistent to how it's always been. You know, again, we're trying to be a vertical one gap defense, create havoc. We want to be aggressive. Um, but I also think every year in college football, especially more so now than ever with the transfer portal, um, you have to recreate yourself every year. And what I mean by that is, as a coordinator, a big part of my job is making sure that we we put our guys in the best position based off of their skill set. So I think that's one thing I've probably learned most over the years is you can't just try to, you know, stick a square peg into a round hole and say, this is what we do on defense. You're going to learn to do this or you're not going to play. You know, you, you got to be able to adapt your, your scheme, um, you know, based off of your personnel. But I think at its core, if you were to cut me wide open, it's probably still the same of what we want to be. You know, we want long guys that can run, that are physical, um, that do the right things on and off the field, um, and really create that culture of togetherness. And I don't think that will ever change. Uh, Coach Harold Perkins, obviously, is a guy with special ability. A lot of talk about how he should be utilized. Uh, how, how do you see that you and this defense will maximize his talent? Who's that you're talking about? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, think, I think Perk has done a phenomenal job buying into what we want to do. Um, I think, you know, I know that's always the, the number one question I get is, how are you going to use Harold? I think you can use Harold in a variety of different ways. I think we have to start him somewhere and get him really good at that. Um, but he's so explosive. Uh, he, he, he's got an innate ability to really turn the edge. You know. So again, going back to, to Corey's question, we're going to find out what he does best and we're going to utilize his skill set. So um, that's something that we've always done in this scheme is find a way to get our best players doing what they do best. and hopefully matchup wise do it against their worst player. So we'll use him in a bunch of a uh, uh, variety of ways, any ways you can really think about, because I think he can do it all. I think you can bring him off the edge. Uh, he can play inside linebacker. He's grown exponentially and, and it's, it's hot in here. <laughs> um, but he's, he's grown exponentially as far as his, uh, you want me to stop or keep going? Awesome. Oh. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? An alarm has been activated in the building. Please proceed to the stairways and exit the building. Do Think not this is legit? Until we see smoke, we're staying put. Yeah, me too. This is the first. You gotta uh, adapt or die. So. We'll figure it out once we see smoke. It's every man for himself and woman. I think that's the closest, but that's the kitchen. We might be in trouble. If we see smoke coming out of that door, go that way. Uh, all the new, I mean, everything's kind of standard, um, except for all uh, the new training room and the new players' lounge. Um, but outside of that, it's it's... Trying to think what else. <laughs> um, what we're talking about, Harold. All right, so Harold, let's get back on the, on task. Um, no, but Harold is a guy that we can use in a, in a variety of different ways. So 
um, to me, we're not going to just put him in one spot and say, hey, this is what you're going to do. But now we have to start him there. Again, we got to start him there. He's got to get really good at the position. And then, again, his innate ability to come off the edge. He's a really good blitzer, as we're finding out this spring on the inside. Um, he's really good in coverage. So there's not much that the guy can't do. We just can't overload him with all that right now. But he, he's done a really good job learning the defense. Um, he's done a really good job improving at inside linebacker. You know, that was one thing, even when I told him when I, in the recruiting process, you know, he didn't play inside linebacker in high school. He played running back. He played receiver. They put him at like a monster backer and kind of see ball, hit ball. Um, so it's new to him, and, but, but he's really embraced the role. Um, and again, we're going to find ways to utilize his skill set best and, and hopefully put him on their worst player every single week. So we have a lot of big plans for him, but we got we to gotta crawl before we walk. So, but proud of him. He's done a really, really good job for us this far. Just following up on, on Harold, you know, they tried to put him inside linebacker last year and it only kind of lasted one game. So like what needs to happen in order for him to be able to fully grasp and do all these things at inside linebacker? Reps, reps. And, and, and so anytime I ever take over a new job, I don't, I, I'll, I'll watch, I'll have the GAs make like a 10, 20 play point of attack tape just to kind of see what a guy can do athletically when he's in position to, to make a play, does he make it? So schematically, I really don't even know what they did last year. Um, so I can't answer that from a schematic standpoint, but inside linebacker, to me, um, it, it, it's an instinctual position, but the way you gain instincts is by getting reps. So the more and more reps he gets, the more and more he continues to grow, and, and, and you've seen that so far. Um, but that's really what it's going to come down to is, is making sure that we can maximize his reps, maximize him seeing different looks, and then playing off of that, and then simplifying the game for him. Um, you know, I think you go back to 21 with, with Damone Clark, same thing as, as everybody said, oh, he, he can't play inside linebacker, he can't. If you simplify the game for any kid, they can do what you ask them to do. And that's part of being a good coach, in my opinion, is, is asking a kid to do something that he can physically do and then demand he do it. If you ask a kid to do something he can't physically do, then you're a bad coach, you know what I mean, and demand him do it. So um, he'll, he'll be just fine. I'm excited about him. Uh, what is it that you guys have wanted to accomplish this spring in terms of defense and installation? I mean, just just maybe just walk us through what you were the goals are and just maybe how close you are to, to accomplishing them. The number one goal um, is play with energy and passion and effort, um, and that's something we talk about every single unit meeting. Is your effort, your attitude, and, and your toughness that you bring. Outside of that. Execution will come, but it, but defensive football you can make up for a lot of mistakes with great energy and great effort, and and, and being good tacklers, which comes down to, to being tough. Um, so that's our number one goal. And, and I told our guys after practice today, I we cannot be result oriented. Like we can't worry about if we win the drill or if we won that play. I'm worried about how hard you're playing. The execution will come. But I've been impressed. The, the, the guys have really really bought in. Again, it took them a little bit of time. You know, you got to show it on tape when they're doing it right, when they're not doing it right, as far as the effort, you know, and we make a big deal out of that. But um, we're, we're a work in progress, but we're much, much further ahead than we were, you know, a week ago. So that's our number one goal. We're still, we're still growing and, and gaining towards that goal, but they're headed in the right direction. Hey, Coach. Um, Greg Penn is arguably one of the more underrated linebackers in this conference, and you actually got to coach him his freshman year. How has he improved from the time when he was a freshman until now? Um, well, number one is leadership. You know, he, he's played a lot of football, um, so you can see him be much more vocal. I, I thought he always had that in him, but it's kind of hard as, as a freshman. Um, but that's the number one attribute. And then number two, kind of like – what we just talked about with Harold, he's played a lot of football. He was always in his, he played inside linebacker in high school. I thought he always had good instincts by the time he got here, but he's improved as far as backfield recognition, really, really improved more on what's an offense, how, how are they trying to attack you from a formation backfield set. So um, those are probably the two biggest things I've seen him improve on. Coach, the defensive backs secondary really struggled last year just with Jake Olson, Corey Raymond, coming back into the coaching staff. Just what have you seen from the secondary so far this spring, and where are you hoping they get by the by the end of spring ball? Um, I've seen some ups and downs. Uh, the one thing I'll say is we got guys that'll attack the football. Um, we've done a really, really good job on the back end creating turnovers, especially um, Sage Ryan sticks out to me. He, he's had several takeaways this spring. Major Burns has had a really good spring so far. Um, I think the corners have probably grown more than any group 
from practice one to whatever practice, what are we in, 11, 12, somewhere like that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But those corners have gotten much, much better, really as, as a unit. I think, um, uh, I think we have guys probably playing a little more in their natural position on the back end than, than maybe in the past. So um, I've been pleased with them. I, I think we got to continue to grow. And, and that would be, you know, the, the, the motto across uh, summer summer uh, workouts and, and everything. But I do think we have some really good pieces to work with back there. I think we have good depth as well. I, I do. I've been, I've been pleased with that group back there. I'm sure it ends up probably being somewhat of a mix. But in the secondary, like philosophically, do you prefer more like press man coverage, like playing, go, going back to that fostering aggression kind of piece? Or is it kind of like a zone? Like how does that end up kind of shaking out usually? Again, it, it, it's based off your personnel a little bit, right? Um, if you got two guys that can you can put out there on an island, it makes your job a lot easier, in my opinion, as a, as a defensive coordinator. But I think it comes uh, comes down to who you have personnel wise, and then really trying to present the same picture to the quarterback and the offensive coordinator uh, pre snap, and, and giving those guys um, you know an opportunity to to not have to sit there and you know because it can be exhausting from a physical you know physically taxing standpoint to sit there and play press man every every single snap. So. Again, if you were to cut me wide open, we want to play a lot of man, you know. Um, but I also know that we're going to do what's best for uh, our guys back there as well. Hey, Coach, when you were at Tulane, you played in Tiger Stadium in 2001. What are your memories from that game? And did you recover a fumble? I did recover a fumble. That was about the only good memory. <laughs> um, I remember, so that was my second college game ever. And really the first game we – Went up to BYU and didn't really play much. And then second game ever, uh, I think I was playing on all four core special teams and, and was a backup. And I remember, I believe it was the opening kickoff for the first time that LSU kicked off. And I was on the front line. And you run back, you know, all week on scout team. And you turn around and you block your guy. And I remember I ran down. I turned around. That dude was already past me. I said, oh, man, this is different, different speed. So, um, no, but I just remember the crowd. I remember, I believe back then, you know, Mike the Tiger could be in the cage and, and he roared for you a couple times, but just a, a, an electric atmosphere. And really, um, my first experience in Tiger Stadium was in 97. My brother was uh, recruited here um, when they beat Florida, one of the games that registered on the Richter scale and got to go in the locker room and stuff like that. So have some do have some good memories, but the Tulane game was probably not one of the best memories I had in Tiger Stadium. Kind of a lighthearted question, too. I've heard some players say you're one of the few guys that coaches in cleats. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I do wear cleats. Yeah, I got to chase them, man. I tell them if I catch you, we're in trouble. So <laughs> I, I do wear cleats at, at practice. When did you start doing that? Uh, I think probably as a, as a GA. I kind of always just... Again, to me, um, it does kind of send a little message to the guys, you know, that, that we're going to fly around. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of a lot of different levels to it, to be honest with you. Two, I don't really want to bust my butt out there when you're trying to demonstrate drills. Um, and then three, like I tell them, man, if I'm wearing cleats and I catch you, you ain't running fast enough. So it's kind of a, a, a lot of different layers to it. And then back to Harold for a second, because you mentioned the recruiting process and how he hadn't really played inside linebacker in high school. So, like, you were kind of part of his recruiting process there. Like, was the vision always for him to kind of end up being an inside linebacker? Was that maybe what he wanted coming into college eventually? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we had talked about. But also kind of what we plan on doing with him this year is, is you know, moving him around and, and being multiple, um, putting him on the edge, uh, blitzing him from inside, blitzing him from outside, um, sometimes using him as a decoy. Um, you know, to, to, to get protections to slide to them and being able to bring stuff from, from other directions. So, again, a guy like that with his skill set, and he's a smart young man, you can do a lot of different things with him. So when we were recruiting him, we were really kind of selling him what hopefully we're able to do with him finally, you know, now that I'm back. So it's, it's kind of gone full circle. We'll see how it unfolds. All right. Thanks, Blake. Thank you.